plasma you're about to see is a matter of human record. You may believe it or not. But the real people who lived this story, they believe it. They know. They took that one step beyond. <laughs> I'm a little unsettled. You know, guys got to get used to working nights. You should have kept on as a reporter. You were good at that. I'll be all right. Just one second, I'm ready to sleep in the daytime. Look, you ought to see a doctor. Look at Henry. You're looking pretty bad. I'm all right, Leo. <laughs> hey, where's the fire? Service, Jones. I have to get a baking order for Uncle Leo. Ah. Can I come, come and see you on Sunday? I finished those books you lent me. Sure, Danny, sure. It's too bad. Since Mr. Soames has been working late, I don't see much of him. These zigzagging lines, for those who can interpret such charts or graphs, indicate four violent disturbances somewhere on the face of this earth. Now, such a seismographic chart isn't usually found in a newspaper editor's office. But this isn't a day for the usual. The night editor of this paper, the Boston Star, is named Henry Soane. He's a lonely man, quiet and ambitious. And yet, during the next 16 hours, Soames will make newspaper history. For what will happen in the quiet of his office between 5.30 and 6.30 on this August morning of 1883, Soames will never understand. No, will anyone. Oh, Mr. Kinsman. Yeah, what is it, Jake? We've got a really hot one here. Huh? Say, so where did you get this? Just came in from Soames. Well, I'll say it's hot. We already put the paper to bed, didn't we? Yeah, but it's your decision. We can't go on the streets without this. Every newspaper in the country will be carrying it. 
Hold the edition. Print it. All right. Tell Tony to hold the front page, all right? Heading and sub, heading across six. Hello, would you please get me Senate the Senate and Great Primer. We haven't used that since the Civil War. Yes, no, sir. Mr. Kinsman, senior. He edits the paper, remember? Mr. Kinsman. And hurry. big idea, huh? Where have you been? What do you want to come sneaking home for at a time like this? Mr. Kinsman? You're a character. You really are a character. Nobody got it. Nobody else got the story. Sure. The whole of Boston is reading the star. We can't sell enough paper. And you, Soames, Henry, you were the only night editor in the East who picked it up. Oh, sure, they'll be running it in Frisco in L.A., but as far as we've checked, nobody this side of Chicago, but nobody. You want to look at the headline, huh? Jake did a great job, you know. Oh, go on, look at it. Krakatoa. An island in the Dutch East Indies was destroyed by a volcanic eruption late yesterday afternoon. Four gigantic explosions blasted the island and it... Krakatoa, that's a name nobody will ever forget. The biggest explosion of all time. A mountain blown ten miles into the air. Huh. A dust cloud covering half the Indian Ocean. Hey, don't you have some whiskey or something we could celebrate with? And the way you wrote it up. I, I wrote it up? Uh, sure. That was a great bit of journalism, Henry. Oh, by the way, Dad wants to see you over at the office straight away. Straight away. You can sleep for a week after this. Man, you wrote yourself a page of history. Wonderful job you did. Wonderful. There's only one thing bothers me. Ken, how are we going to keep him? That is, unless the paper could use another editor. <laughs> what did you do with the original copy? I've been looking all over for it. I don't know anything about the copy. But it came from the wire room, didn't it? No. Well, at least I, I don't think it did. Well, then, just where did you get the story? I didn't get it, Mr. Kinsman. Oh, Soames! I'm telling you the truth. I don't know anything about this story. I've never heard of Krakatoa. A volcano? It's crazy. The whole thing's absolutely crazy. What on earth are you talking about? Here it is, right on the front page, with your byline. Would you please listen to me? I didn't write that story. I couldn't have. Perhaps you'd like to tell us who did. Well, as a matter of fact, I don't remember much about what happened last night. I was feeling pretty terrible. I handle a lot of routine stuff. And about 5.30, I heard the explosions. Four great explosions. We just heard from the wire room. Yes? It's very strange. Half past nine and there's, there's no follow-up to the story. 36,000 people get blown off the face of the earth and no follow-up. Did you check the wire services? They're checking with us, for heaven's sake. So is New York, Philadelphia, and Washington. It's like a madhouse out there. Nobody heard of Krakatoa until the star came on the streets this morning. The story wasn't transmitted by any of the telegraph services. They say it was the quietest night for months. Say you heard 
four explosions? Yes. Ten, fifteen thousand miles away in the Dutch East Indies? They're in my head. I don't know. The whole building seemed to shake and then everything went blank. And I came to in my room just now. Four gigantic explosions blasted the island and its 2,600 foot mountain off the face of the globe. Kinsman? Are you sure? None of the West Coast papers is carrying the story either. Nobody but us. Kill the story. Get out of everyone you can. Kill it. I want you out of this building in five minutes. You'll never work on another paper as long as you live. I'll see to that. Why don't you do yourself a favor, Soames? Why don't you go throw yourself in the bay? Said you go moco. You go away because of what people are saying. Oh, Danny, I've I've been in Boston a long time. Oh, you know, writers got to move around, learn how the world works. Yes, that's what I'd like to do. Can I have just one more look at that book? The one with the ships in it. things I leave behind that I haven't got room for. Thanks, Mr. Soames. I talked to a man down at the harbor the other day. He took me aboard the brig. Now, you know what I told you about talking to people down there? You keep away from that waterfront, you hear? Uh, this guy was all right. He showed me the compass, was just like and told me. The true law and the magnetic law. Said there were lots of places in the world hadn't been discovered yet. Yeah. There's a whole lot we don't know about, Danny. Yes, I guess. Where's Krakatoa? Can I look for it on the atlas? There's an awful lot of the Dutch East Indies. You said in the cable between Java and what was it? Sumatra? No, Danny. of the earth. It just couldn't have happened. Danny. Danny, I'm not a great reporter. I'm a fake. Danny, I did a terrible thing today. I wrote that story. Sure, I wrote that story, but it's not true. None of it. It didn't happen. Our seismograph picked up these shock waves late yesterday afternoon, Mr. Kinsman. They're very weak and diffracted by the Earth's core. Yeah, but they could have come from the neighborhood of the Dutch East Indies. If you look, Frank, you'll see there are four distinct and distant shocks. Subterranean explosions of the most colossal force. We were trying to figure it out when I picked up your newspaper an hour ago. And I'm still trying to figure it out. The eruption you describe here fits exactly with the characteristics of the wave motion we've recorded. In fact, this kind of upheaval is about the only thing that would explain such a wave pattern. From a scientific point of view, your report would seem to be absolutely accurate. It reads like a piece of first-hand observation, an eyewitness account. The eruption took place late yesterday afternoon. The epicenter is 13,000 miles from here. So before I go completely out of my mind, perhaps one of you gentlemen will kind of explain how you got this information. I don't know that there's very much I can say, except that we would appear to be fortunate. I think extremely fortunate. 
having on our staff an exceptionally gifted night news editor. My husband, tell me! I know he's alive! Oh, tell me! 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 Please get those people out of the building. You know I can't stand it. Bear with it, my friend. They're all readers of the Star. Brand new readers. Say, have you caught the noon edition? Songs before medical experts. Miracle Man of Journalism visits Washington. How does it feel to be famous? Famous, Henry. You've got a very nice office here. Very nice. Oh, by the way, don't forget that lecture tonight at 8.30 at the National Institute. What am I going to say? Oh, you know, the usual. Uh, how I did it. But I didn't do it. Hello? Uh, oh, yes, sir. Uh, would you hold on just a moment, sir? It's Mr. Vermees. He wants to know whether he should buy or sell with Northern Consolidated. I don't know. Well, you did pretty well last time. You made $25,000. I don't know. It was just luck. I don't know. Mr. Vermees is our principal shareholder. Buy or sell? Sell. Hello, sir. Uh, Mr. Soames says he thinks you should sell, sir. Yes, sir, yes. The entire holding. All of it. Eh, Henry? We have to sell, sir. Uh, yes, definitely, sir. He thinks you're a man. Hello, Henry. Is the column ready for tomorrow? Yes. Yes, I think so. You want to hear it? You, me, all of us. We're looking for miracles, for some signs from the sky. We all want to believe they're better than they seem. I'm afraid. The biggest shareholder on the stock market is small and afraid before the enormity of chance. I can tell you. The stock market. A dust cloud that rises eight miles high. That covers 400 square miles. That covers all men with a dread of some ultimate calamity. Before this week. Tremble. Sears, prophecies, a consolation for the extra buck. No. There's no short or easy answer. We're simply men. The end product of a staggering infinity of possibilities. We can blow ourselves to kingdom come. Or we can receive weird, incredible visions. We carry the wonder of ourselves in us. As we carry our own mortality. This blind, stumbling instrument is a man. There, how's that sound? Don't you understand? I didn't do anything. Something happened to me. I'm not a god or a prophet. I'm a very ordinary reporter. And I'm going to stop being your carnival freak. I know my husband. Mr. Storms, I knew you'd come to help me. Where's Danny? Where's my boy? Danny, he went off this morning and didn't come back. The police have been searching for him all afternoon. You know that boy in ships. That's where he is, on a ship. You were his friend. He loved you. You were like a father to him. He'll be all right, I'm sure of it. You went on some ship. What one? Tell me, what one? You're different from us. You can see things. Tell us, where's Danny? I don't know. 
I don't know. So what did you come back here for? What good are you if you can't find Danny? You've done it before. Go on. Do whatever you do. This your boy? Probably. Uh, hang on a minute, Harry, will you? Clark? Mm hmm? You know who's here? I haven't time for games, Jake. Who? You remember Henry Soames? Soames? <laughs> this paper will never forget him. What you been doing with yourself all this time, huh? Oh, I've been, uh, I've been up and down, all around. I've been, I've been everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think I, I was once a Bostonian. <laughs> well, welcome back. Thank, thank you, sir. Soames, look at this. While attending a reception in Buffalo yesterday, President McKinley was shot at by an assassin. Two bullets were fired, fatally wounding the president. Well, get a phone line to Buffalo then, quick. Attending a reception in Buffalo yesterday, President McKinley was shot at by an assassin. Two bullets were fired, fatally wounding the President. Now, this is the one part of Soames' story which cannot be verified. Did he return to Boston and in the news editor's room predict the assassination of President McKinley? This is legend. The rest is not. Soames did indeed, in a Boston newspaper, report the explosion of Krakatoa 12 hours after it happened, which was many hours before the news could have reached the American continent by any human agency. What was Soames? A prophet? A freak of nature? Or just an ordinary man who, by some cosmic coincidence, performed a miracle? or that which is inexplicable. 